one of the major uh, uh, problem areas for the Indian uh, indigenization drive is the failure to produce uh, very good jet engines. Ukraine war now in full swing. The Americans started putting a lot of pressure on India to cut off its uh, arms relationship, arms deals with the Russians. And sure enough, we got that stab in the back. I think it has been uh, quite a wake-up call for India, the way the Americans have scuttled the jet engine deal. The American ambassador was threatening India that there is no question of being non-aligned in a situation of conflict between the United States and uh, Russia. The best thing for India to do is to indigenize and indigenize at a very, very rapid pace. I do not think it would be very wise for India to close its options with the East, with Russia. Can India continue to rely on Russia as a weapon supplier? My simple uh, answer is, what option do you have? Till recently, about 60 to 70 percent of India's arms imports, especially critical cutting-edge weapons, have been sourced from Russia. This arms relationship goes back to the early 1960s, when the United States had refused to provide us F-104 starfighters, which we needed uh, to balance uh, China and Pakistan. It was then that India was forced to uh, go turn towards the Soviet Union to get the MiG-21s. And that was the start of the long-term Indo-Russian, uh, you know, military security relationship. This relationship saw its acme reach its peak in the 1971 war, before and during the 1971 war. In fact, at that time, the United States had aligned up with Pakistan and China to uh, pose a major, major threat to India. And uh, it was with American support and encouragement and abetment that Pakistan had dared to, uh, you know, poke India in the eye by uh, a ferocious genocidal crackdown in then East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, and driven about 10 million refugees into India to more or less torpedo our economy which was coming out of the doldrums, which had just managed to achieve self-sufficiency in food. So, India had no option but to turn to the then Soviet Union. And in August 1971, we were forced to sign the Peace and Friendship Accord with, uh, with the USSR. Now, this went a long way to uh, securing India against the very ominous U.S.-Pakistan-China alliance, very hostile alliance, which was uh, all set to do us uh, serious damage. It is to India's credit that they fought that uh, war. We sort of, you know, launched a blitzkrieg, which in 13 days uh, broke Pakistan into two, created a new nation state with the force of arms. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the restructuring of subcontinental security was done in a manner that underlined India's preeminence, uh, military preeminence in the South Asian region. Uh, let's not forget that at that time, the United States had gone to the extent of sending in the Seventh Fleet into the Bay of Bengal to coerce India and uh, to uh, sort of uh, prevent the collapse of Pakistan. Uh, it was at that stage <coughs> that we invoked the Peace and Friendship Treaty with the Soviet Union and they sent in their nuclear submarine Armada into the Bay of Bengal to threaten uh, the Seventh Fleet and to deter it from any adventurism uh, or hostile action against India. Let us also not forget that we had, uh, uh, you know, purchased air defense radars from uh, uh, the United States. They refused to give it to us 
on the pretext of that Indo-Pakistan conflict. And then they passed on the gaps <laughs> that these radars were supposed to fill to the Chinese to encourage them to attack India in the course of the 71 war. Uh, the Indo, uh, I mean, the, the US China Deta was still very fresh and the Chinese were still suspicious of the Pakistanis. And because of a lot of internal factors like the revolt by Lin Biao, etc., coup attempt by Lin Biao, they did not intervene in the 71 war. Otherwise, things could have been very, very difficult for India. Uh, so, uh, then of course, there was the collapse of the Soviet Union that occurred in 1990. And there was a near collapse of the Indian economy in the same year. And both these, uh, you know, mega events uh, sort of conspired to bring about a paradigm shift in our uh, uh, national security architecture, in our relationships in this region. Uh, we had to scramble to get spare parts for our Russian weapon systems that we already had. Uh, almost the bulk of our tanks, artillery, uh, aircraft, uh, uh, naval battleships were then of Soviet origin. And India was hard pressed as to what it could do. Uh, we had no option but to diversify our import of weapon systems. There had been a lot of talk of uh, uh, indigenization, achieving autarky in the production of defense systems. But unfortunately, it was all on paper. You know, uh, in the name of uh, indigenization, we were going in for the import of semi-knockdown and completely knockdown kits, which we were assembling in India and putting together, sometimes at a cost that exceeded the cost of a direct import. But uh, this optical illusion of self-sufficiency we were trying to maintain by importing semi-knockdown and completely knockdown kits from Russia. And frankly, this did delay any actual uh, indigenization of our weapon systems that was so, so uh, badly needed by India. But we failed to do it throughout that decade, almost till the 70s and 80s and 90s. Uh, because our economy had collapsed, there was very little chances then of trying to get uh, uh, to indigenize our arms production base. Uh, we had to revive the economy first before we could uh, spend uh, uh, respectable portions of our GDP onto defense. So we had no option but to diversify our arms imports and primarily we went towards France and we went towards Israel. These were two countries that were very, very supportive. They stood by us and a fair amount of our uh, cutting edge equipment came from the French, the Mirage 2000, subsequently the Rafales, the Scorpion submarines uh, and cooperation in the production of, uh, uh, you know, in space technology, uh, etc. Uh, even nuclear technology. Uh, France was very forthcoming and so was Israel. In the 65 war, the 71 war, the Israelis had pulled out all stops to help us. So it is to these two nations that primarily we diversified. We also brought the Anglo-French Jaguar in this phase of diversification. And we made tentative opening towards the Americans, but uh, they did not quite bite because America had made a major, uh, you know, pivot uh, to countering the Soviet Union. So they had relied on China and outreach to China, Deta with China, and that reduced India's importance in American eyes. We were marginalized. Uh, things began to change by the turn of this century uh, in a pretty significant manner. Uh, the the data between the Americans and the Chinese seemed to unravel. Uh, China uh, had been helped to become a major economic power by the Americans in the hope that they could influence and they could affect a change of government in uh, Beijing. But instead of that, they turned uh, communist uh, with a vengeance, even as they turned 
capitalist with a vengeance under Deng Xiaoping. And uh, 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 America actually helped create a rival military economic power. China initially kept uh, its military ambitions under wraps and uh, it decided to give primacy to its economic modernization over its military modernization. But by the end of the last century, all that had changed and China was rising, emerging as a major counter uh, uh, to the United States, a major threat to the United States. And that is the time that the United States began to explore the uh, options to counterbalance uh, uh, China in Asia. And the two countries that could hope to do that uh, could help the Americans to counterbalance the power of a rising and increasingly more truculent and aggressive China were India and Japan. So, uh, quite obviously, the Americans tried to uh, cobble up the quad architecture of India, Japan, America and Australia to counter the power of a rising China. And uh, this gave India an opening to uh, the uh, opening to the United States. And India then decided to diversify and uh, start buying a large number of weapon systems from the United States. In fact, some major deals were struck. The Boeing Maritime Reconnaissance P-8 aircraft uh, for the Indian Navy. Uh, then the C-17 long-range transport jets, which is a very, very useful uh, purchase from the Americans. And then, of course, uh, we have been uh, trying to strike a deal to go in for the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the engines F404 and F414 General Electric jet engines, because one of the major uh, uh, problem areas for the Indian uh, indigenization drive is the failure to produce uh, very good jet engines of the 110 kilonewton class and above in India. So we had done that deal with the United States as also with the General Atomics, we were going to buy the Predator and the Sea Guardian, Air Guardian class of uh, hails, high uh, altitude, uh, high, uh, high altitude, long endurance uh, drones that uh, had proved so effective in Afghanistan. We wanted to get these not only for uh, uh, the ground uh, component of uh, our defense, but also for the, uh, the ISR capabilities, uh, intelligence, uh, surveillance, reconnaissance capabilities over the Indian Ocean. Uh, but now again, we found that uh, unfortunately the Russia-Ukraine war intervened and led to a sharp polarization. What we could get away with buying weapon systems from both the East and the West earlier, we found we were getting increasingly constrained and uh, America had put in the Katsa, uh, you know, the act to prevent uh, nations from buying uh, high-tech weapons from Russia. And uh, then our uh, deal for the S-400 uh, uh, anti-aircraft missile, surface-to-air missile, long-range, uh, 300 kilometer plus class uh, surface-to-air missiles became problematic. It was with great effort that India was able to get a deal for five uh, uh, batteries of these missiles from the Russians. And the Americans gave us a waiver in the Katsa. But with the Russia-Ukraine war now in full swing, the Americans started putting a lot of pressure on India to cut off its uh, arms relationship, arms deals with the Russians. Completely cut it off. Now, uh, India very wisely did not uh, rise up to this bait because uh, then we would have put all our eggs in one basket and that can be pretty dangerous as we had realized much earlier. Uh, the Americans totally have blocked. We paid the money, but they have blocked. They have stabbed us in the back with the jet engine deal. They are not, they are uh, deliberately delaying the F404 jet engines, which are required to build up, rapidly build up our uh, Tejas, uh, you know, Mark 1, uh, 1A fleet 
which is required to replace the aging MiG-21 war horses that have been going on since the 1960s. This has been quite a setback, I think, in Indo-American relations because they have suddenly turned very hostile, the Americans. They, they felt that India had not, uh, India had to be forced to choose between Russia and the United States or the West. And to that extent, they have started uh, coercion. They have started openly being hostile towards India. Uh, the first indications came with the Panun, uh, you know, uh, allegations that India was trying to assassinate that Sikh uh, separatist leader in the United States. Uh, there had been earlier fracas with Canada. And uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, things have become uh, fairly complex complicated in the Indo-US uh, relationships. India continued to buy oil from the, uh, from the, from the Russians because the Europe, despite all the sanctions, high Falutin talk of sanctions was buying oil and gas from the Russians. Uh, India purchased that oil, India refined that oil from Russia and Europe was buying it from us. So it was a lot of hypocrisy involved. So, India continued to give primacy to its own national security interest. Russia was a tried and tested friend. And before we jettisoned that friend in a hurry, we had to be very careful of what we were getting in return. And sure enough, we got that stab in the back. I think it has been uh, quite a wake-up call for India, the way the Americans have scuttled the jet engine deal. So, it just reinforces India's uh, you know, traditional hesitancy, India's traditional, uh, what shall I say, uh, 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 India's traditional hesitancy in trying to approach the United States for major weapon systems, caution and uh, prudence, which has, uh, uh, you know, stood us actually quite well, that prudence. But we had started, uh, we were enthused by the fact that uh, China, uh, America was pivoting to Asia to counter China, but uh, America seems to have decided that China is not the main threat and it is Russia and it is against Russia that the deep state in the United States had turned to with a vengeance uh, to try and uh, destroy Russia as a major military economic power. The aim of uh, poking Russia in the eye to force it to uh, invade Ukraine was to, you know, get a pretext to impose economic sanctions and destroy uh, the Soviet, uh, destroy Russia uh, economically like the Soviet Union had been torpedoed in 1990. That hasn't quite worked. That hasn't quite worked. The Russian economy has on the contrary improved. It is the economy of uh, Europe which has seen near devastation. Uh, the American economy has gained because of heavy sales of weapons to Europe, to Ukraine and all over the world. But uh, the simple fact of the matter is that uh, this polarization has really harmed the interests of India. Uh, the Americans are turning on the heat. They have uh, the American ambassador was threatening India that there is no question of being non-aligned in a situation of conflict between the United States and uh, Russia. India will have to choose sides, etc. And to force India to choose sides, uh, we found that they staged the coup in Bangladesh. They staged a colored revolution in Bangladesh with the help of the Pakistani ISI. They have been trying to mount pressure on India uh, the, in the northeast. They are talking of the creation of a, a Christian state on the Indo-Myanmar border, which would gravely harm India's national security interests. They have been trying to support the Khalistan separatist movement in India. They have been again trying to help the Pakistan army and ISI complex wage an asymmetric conflict against India. Uh, they have started imposing a whole lot of tariffs on India, they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, that tit for tat system has started. Much was expected of the uh, Indian visit to Indian visit of the Indian Prime Minister to the United States 
to try and mend the fast deteriorating relations. I don't think that has really worked. Uh, we can only hope and pray that uh, things would change if there is, uh, there is a change of administration in the United States with the coming in of Donald Trump, who have, uh, the Republicans have traditionally been more friendly to India. Uh, Donald Trump is far more hostile towards China. He's not keen to uh, exacerbate the conflict with Russia. He very uh, rightly wants to focus on China as the long-term threat, uh, military and economic to the interests of the United States. And to that extent, that would uh, strengthen the argument for a relationship, strategic relationship, deepening of strategic relationship between India and the United States. But so far, the very contrary has happened because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Now, can India continue, with this as the backdrop, can India continue to rely on Russia as a weapon supplier? My simple uh, answer is, what option do you have? There is very little option. The United States wants to, us to cut off all military purchase relationships with Russia. But when we go in for the purchase of jet engines from uh, America, we get stabbed in the back. We are uh, taken for a ride. We pay the money and they refuse to supply us the uh, jet engines, which is, which is, I think, a fairly, b b it does great harm to India's national security. We ultimately will have no choice but to safeguard our interest. Luckily, there has been an opening again to, uh, again to uh, France, which has offered to help us with the Safran engines the 110 uh, kilo newton class of engines because the americans are more or less scuttling the uh, ge uh, 404 jet engine deal so we have to look elsewhere also for advanced medium combat aircraft we have to look for the ge 414 type engines and equivalents so uh, since the americans have ditched us completely we have no option but to either turn towards France or go back to the Russians. The point at issue is that there seems to be no end in sight to the Russia-Ukraine war. Now, that quite obviously means that Russia has to prioritize, uh, you know, weapons and equipment before it can sell them to others. And to that extent, uh, we have received only three batteries out of the five of the S-400 and the balance two are yet to come. And we are, uh, that will depend upon how the Russia-Ukraine war proceeds ahead. So far, Russia has the clear military advantage, manpower advantage, military technical advantage in terms of military mobilization. So uh, perhaps we will see the conclusion of this war after the November elections in uh, the United States. Uh, after that, we'll have to see which way uh, things go. The best thing for India to do is to indigenize and indigenize at a very, very rapid pace. But we still do need some critical technologies from uh, external sources. And uh, there we will have to make our choice. America as a choice, unless there is a regime change in Washington, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a new government, uh, a Republican government comes to power there. Uh, the chances are very dismal and they get increasingly more bleak under the democratic dispensation of Joe Biden. It has been a bit of a disaster. It has been a bit of a disaster, the Indian outreach towards uh, Washington. Uh, uh, India is now trying to broker peace between Russia and Ukraine and in the bargain try and have a benign kind of a relationship with all concerned. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it will be multilateral engagement, uh, engagement across the board with a whole different set of uh, state actors. Some of them have turned absolutely hostile and antagonistic. So, India's leeway for, uh, uh, you know, for uh, uh, outreach to all is reducing by the day. 
because of the sharp polarization caused by the Russia Ukraine war india has to do a very tight uh, tight rope balancing act which is becoming more and more difficult to to pull off whether india will succeed in pulling it off and remain uh, multi aligned and multi engaged remains to be seen but uh, we have to primarily safeguard our own interests if the americans are going to backstab if the americans are going to renege on critical arms deals like the jet engine supply we have no option but to look towards france we, and we may have no option but to look towards russia so it would be extremely unwise on india's part to close slam all doors you know against uh, all doors with uh, russia just to please the united states which doesn't seem to be pleased by anything at all and if anything it has been becoming overtly hostile so i don't think we can try and uh, suck up again to the united states with this level of hostility on display india may have no option but to safeguard its core national interests and hope and pray that with the change of guard in washington possibly a more friendly government india friendly government would come in there uh, there are sharp polarizations with the united states itself there are lobbies anti china uh, lobbies anti russia lobbies and uh, we have to navigate our ways between these lobbies we have to be able to uh, uh, dexter uh, you know dexterity with great dexterity you know try and uh, uh, try and align with the lobbies that are anti china in the united states and uh, leverage our uh, own uh, opportunities uh, if you look at it from the purely rational point of view uh especially with china as a emerging threat rising threat rising and ever more hostile threat to the united states long range threat to the united states it makes sense for an alignment of interests between india and the united states that was the theory but in practice i'm sorry it is just not worked out it is very sad but it is just not worked out despite excellent people to people relations despite both of us being democracies uh, we thought the alignment of national security interests in terms of countering china would help to cement the indo us relationship it was progressing well but it is now uh, gotten almost derailed the outgoing biden administration has done great harm to relationships with india uh, india is trying to gamely uh, still retain uh, that kind of balance between the east and the west but that will become increasingly more difficult i do not think it would be very wise for india to close its options with the east with russia you see the brics are coming out as a now major counterweight in international relationship and uh, if the united states relationship continues to sour the way it is under joe biden well then india may have no option but to tilt towards the brics and uh, you know and russia india china we may then have to align to prevent such hostile actions against us we haven't seen such hostile outrightly hostile actions against china as we have seen against uh, india per se and uh, if uh, that is the way th this relationship will progress then maintaining a balance would be difficult like i said we can only hope and pray that there is uh, a change of administration in washington and uh, we have a more india friendly uh, administration come up in washington otherwise things are going south and we'll have to keep our other options quite well open france and israel of course are one but russia we cannot close the door on a tried and tested uh, military economic and other uh, uh, mutually beneficial relationship which has stood the test of time for decades thank you